Hi, we can go to stresses part 2. So, we will already see the types of stresses. So, we will see the tensile stress. So, tensile stress is already said. When the load is applied on an element along the axis is kind of pulling which is nothing but a tensile load. So, due to tensile load, some stress will be generated inside the element. The stress is known as tensile stress. So, which is nothing but applied tensile load by the cross-sectional area. Whatever may be the cross-section like a rectangular, circular or square cross-section. So, based on the cross-section, the stress will be generated on it. And then, when we apply the load, which exceeds the yield value. Yield is very simple. Now, stress strain curve drop on the E and this one is sigma. So, when the stress increases, one point to arrive, we will elongate the original dimension. That is elastic. Elastic region. So, on the region, a certain period, that is the load increase. Some deviation will be there. Then, the material comes under plastic region. So, elastic region will elongate the original portion of the elastic region. But, in the plastic region, the load will be yield point exceed. Again, the original portion will come. Then, it will deform permanently at the plastic region. If you further increase or increase, a certain period will be material failure. So, when we apply the load, when the load increases till the yield point, the material or the element will come to original position. So, when it reaches the yield point, it will go, it will go under the plastic region, then it will never come to its original position. So, plastic na complete permanent deformation. Rukho. So, you know, further increase panna, increase panna, a certain point la poi failure hai. Adha ultimate so long. Ultimate point and yield point. Yield point na dhanana, or object or elastic limit. Yield point is less than that. That original portion is there. Yield point is higher than that. That is why permanent deform. If you increase or increase, the ultimate point is reached. That is failed. This is ductile material. So, if you want to see this, you can see this. That is a separate video. So, now come on to come to tensile stresses. So, here when I apply the load along the axis, which is kind of pulling, the stresses will be generated inside it. That is tensile stress and that is nothing but load by area so due to the elongation some strain will be there so strain is elongated length by original length change in length by original length hooks law padi stress on strain is directly proportional arukko nama adha inga kavala patho so now come to compressive stress so this is similar to the tensile one but opposite in direction the same element we have to apply the load along the axis but it kind of pushing so previous case like we have to pull it and here we have to push it so due to pushing the material will be compressed so internally some stresses will be generated so the compressed tube stress is known as load by area so here also similarly some elongation or some compression will be there so based on the strain will be change in length by original length and then come to direct shear so we can take as an example of revert so when two plates are connected by rivet and applied load like this so at the middle portion of the rivet will go under some sliding in material so when the load exceeds there is a chance of sliding of material at the middle of the rivet so due to sliding of material and sliding of atoms and molecules there will be shear stress which is nothing but direct shear force divided by the area area is nothing but the cross section area of the rivet so direct shear na when we apply the load directly so due to the applied load some sliding of material will be there in the element so due to the sliding of material shearing stress will be there so these are the basic direct stresses and now apart from the direct stresses which are tensile compressive and direct shear there are additionally two important stresses one is torsional or twisting and another one is bending so we have seen in strength of material subject torsional equation and bending equation so we can see simply and if you need you can mention in the comment we can see in detail so torsion now so consider a rod element so we have to twist the rod element for a particular theta angle 
about its own axis so when we twist so there is some material sliding inside the element so due to that shear stress will be generated so we can calculate the shear stress by using Tarsner equation T by J is equal to 2 by R T is nothing but your torque and J is nothing but polar moment of inertia for circle cross section we can say that J is equal to pi by 32 d power 4 and then C is nothing but modulus of rigidity and theta is angle of twist and length is length of the rod so based on torsional equation we can calculate the torsional stresses and next one we can come to the bending so when you apply the load which is perpendicular to the axis the stress generated will be the bending stress so here also the bending equation will be there we can calculate the bending stress m y divided by i so m is your bending moment which is nothing but the applied load into the perpendicular distance that is moment and then y is nothing but the distance between outermost layer and the axis that is y so for the particular example y is nothing but the radius of the rod so suppose if it is a hollow shaft in cross section and y will be the distance between the axis to the outermost layer not the inner layer or inner radius so it will be the outermost layer and the axis distance will be y so by using the bending moment equation we can calculate the bending moment so these are the five major stresses we can see for example was one tensile and then compressive then direct shear then torsional and bending so based on that by using the stresses formulas and the application of loads we can design the element we can see in next video. So thank you for watching. Subscribe my channel. Thank you.